Hey folks, uh, looking at uh, the thing I'm working on, uh, Dev Diaries. It's probably gonna be the first one that I'm doing public, so I, I'm gonna try and make sure that I don't uh, leak details while trying to talk about the, the, the thing I'm gonna talk about. Um, I'm now like a week and a half into working full time on a thing, and uh, I've spent about a year basically preparing for this. So the, the code base is it's pretty extensive already. There's a large amount of tests. There's uh, multiple sort of systems in place. It's sort of, a, it's not, you wouldn't call it a distributed system, but there's like four, three or four sort of separate uh, systems that talk together in order to eventually uh, become thing. And um, one of the one of the sort of pieces I've been punting on for uh, all until now basically um, has been sort of what is the what is the user facing system? Um, you know we have a bunch of different sort of backends pieces, some that deal with real time and some that deal with like that are just solid GraphQL APIs. That's part of what Redwood does for me, um, and Redwood also sort of provides the admin area for all of that sort of database munging. Um, but, uh, I, I sort of prototyped for the last few months in, in, in web using Redwood to sort of get a sense of what the thing I wanted to build would look like and feel like. Um, but uh, you know, now I'm working on it full time. It's time to start thinking about what the, the, the real sort of end goal of, uh, the user facing system looks like. So to, to try and give you a sense of what, what the problem domain is, um, I have, uh, I have something that I think will first be predominantly web um, and then will need corresponding uh, iOS and Android apps. Um, so whatever whatever I build uh, needs to work well on web first and then sort of needs to be uh, easy to, to think of as a, as a, a native-ish system. Um, so my first stab at that was, you know, why don't we just do Redwood? Uh, Redwood is for the web, which is how I was originally prototyping it, and then have two separate React Native uh, shipped apps. Um, I just spent a bit of time sort of prototyping with Flutter. It, it looks great. Um, I'm still not at a place where uh, where, where Flutter's trade-offs make sense for me, um, in that like, I still like the idea that React Native provides native components at the end of the day, and you know the JavaScript is generally speaking just coordinating it. Um, and what I explored and eventually came to a conclusion on was that maybe shipping a single React Native web and React Native iOS and React Native Android code base might be an acceptable trade-off for, for this project. Um, you know, we, we explored it back at Artsy, so I, that must have been four years ago, maybe a bit more where we were looking at sort of porting over the, uh, the, 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 the sort of architectural and uh, developer experiences that we had created on the React Native side uh, over to the website uh, of Artsy. At the time, they were sort of still using CoffeeScript and um, doing Backbone, I believe. Uh, and, you know, we were on React Native with uh, TypeScript and Relay and... Um, have had a very and, and GraphQL, they, they're a good chunk of the web and ported, but not not all and not consistently, and so we moved all of that stuff over. And one of the things that we looked at there was like, um, you know, if we're if we're gonna have very if, if we want parity uh, between these two platforms, then maybe an option to do that is to have a single code base. Um, and at the time, like React Native Web was just a bit too a bit too young. It was sort of a side project by uh, Nicholas, who is still working on it pretty actively today. Um, but it, 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 at that point, it still didn't have any sort of uh, big examples of it, of it working. Um, and, you know, today we have uh, Twitter.com, which, you know, whether you like it or not, uh, it does mean that you can build extremely big uh, pieces of software using, um, using React Native Web. And for me, it was uh, when I started looking through uh, Expo. I'd been uh, debating whether Expo was a good sort of baseline for the React Native iOS and Android apps, but uh, hadn't got around to actually making any prototypes. And so when I, when I started doing that, 
um, I realized that React Native Web was basically treated as a, a peer to both React Native iOS and React Native Android. And that meant that, you know, as, a, as effectively a single developer today, and hopefully within a, a few months, there might be two of us working on it, that would give us the ability to sort of have one code base, but jump down into whatever native, to, maybe that's not the right way to think about it. To be able to have one code base where each platform can be given individual sort of uh, code for that platform. So I don't mean in the sense of like, you know, you ship uh, you ship a Java app and it, look, it, it tries to look the same on every single platform. I mean in the sense that like, I've been copying and pasting code from my React web uh, infrastructure in Redwood over to this React Native web stuff. And it just works because it's actually just React under the hood on the web, which uh, would absolutely crash outright in the in, in these iOS and Android code bases but because it's accessing things that only exist in the DOM. But, uh, but it is fine if I can safely scope those DOM-specific changes to just code that runs in React Native web. And so it's like one code base where you can quite happily tweak bit by bit at the sort of leaf no, of your leafs of your sort of view children component hierarchy um and so for example you know one of the ways in which uh thing works is that there's sort of quite loose decoupling between multiple systems that have to interact on the same page um and you know on on the web i've already implemented some of those things using um you know, JavaScript uh, script tags with modules that have import and exports that are sort of dynamically created. And that code will just be directly ported onto the web version. And it's up to me to then figure out how to deal with that same problem domain in the context of React Native and, uh, well, iOS and Android. Um, and so I, I, I think by having a React Native web app that predominantly starts off in web, we're going to be able to work through the weakest parts of that system initially, right? It's like, you know, when you're designing for something, you try and design for the thing that has the most constraints. So generally that is mobile. Um, and then you can sort of work out how do I build that to be a bigger design space when you're um, trying to figure out, you know, how to make it look good at all, all sizes. Like for us, and for me, technically, when I look at React Native Web, that seems to me to be like the the biggest like sort of risk factor in the in the in the in the in that choice between of uh, using React Native for the web for, uh, as well as for iOS and Android. Um, but one code base where I can individually edit in the, like the the leaf nodes, the parts that uh, are, are important, are, are really useful there. And like the thing that I saw that really made me uh, switch from <laughs> hello Doug from um, Having, having like multiple code bases being uh, you know okay to them being like existentially like worrying for me was that we uh, we started to look at some of the, the features that were going to be a thing and some of those just looked absolutely bonkers to have two equivalent of like a good example might be like a chat component right like nobody really wants to implement a chat component twice because it's just got a lot of complexity that's sort of uh, it's like depth complexity and not breadth complexity. Like, uh, it, the, like building any code base is about trying to manage complexity and, um, building the same code base multiple times is like often a good place to introduce bugs between things. But when you're like, it always feels like chat is one of those things that everybody gets wrong when they're doing multiple implementations of. And even at Artsy, we, we had multiple implementations of our chat and that also came with its own problems. Um, and I just like, as a, as a, you know, as an individual dev, uh, don't want to be trying to implement this same thing multiple times across multiple platforms. Uh, and like, if it was just view trivial view level stuff, you know, I had dumb JSON parsing to views, like that would be okay. And I, I think I would be, I'd be, I'd be more all right with, um, with having multiple implementations as long in order to make sure everyone every single one feels right for the platform and like best for users but once some of the once we started to really like narrow down the things that we actually needed to build um some of those looked like 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 little icebergs where the, the complexity just lays in the internals and eventually you get like quite a simple output but 
Um, and so I, I started like mini panicking and eventually sort of looking through like techniques for having singular code bases for all of them. And I think it's looking like Expo might be a good option for that. Um, and, um, you know, I've, I've only, I've only potted, uh, a few screens over right now, um, to, to sort of, you know, see how it all works in part because like, you know, React Native has moved on a lot since when I used to do React Native. And even then, you know, Artsy had, um, uh, Artsy was like quite, we were, we, we wouldn't very rarely use other people's dependencies. And so a lot of, uh, a lot of what we had was sort of, you know, internal best practices slash, uh, things that we'd built ourselves, um, in order to try and sort of avoid getting locked into a specific version of some navigation tool or, um, you know, a router system that like, you know, they moved on because they found a better syntax to do something. And then we would have to sort of follow along. Um, but when, but now, like, in order to live at a higher level of abstraction, I have to use those sorts of tools. And uh, a lot of those tools I just don't understand yet because it's only been a few days and uh, there's just a lot to learn. Um, so that's me trying to figure out, like, right now, whether React Native Web is the right uh, platform for me doing the web parts of, of thing. Um, but it's generally feeling okay so far. Deployments have been super smooth. I've got like a version of staging going on every commit. I've got like Expo building, uh, like and publishing to uh, using Expo Go, which means it can just run on an uh, on an iPhone or an Android app that's just lying around. They they don't do anything because a lot of the the stuff is still very much DOM focused, and I haven't ported all of the code to React Native yet. It's still quite a lot of lowercase react components uh which would only run in um in in react native web but uh i think there's i think there's something there um i'm just i'm just hoping that 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 that, that, that works out well um but it, it it's it's a bit of a it's a bit of a guess but you know people are shipping react native web apps and you know, I, it would be bleeding edge, I think, still, um, but I think it could be feasible. So that's uh, that's my, I guess, first public uh, sort of exploration a dev diary that, into things that I've been thinking about at the moment. And um, I hope to see you again.